Hey y'all, welcome to part two of my year-end makeup declutter series. Again, so freaking excited for this series. I love decluttering so much. So if you haven't seen part one, let me break it down for you real quick. I talked about like my goals and everything at the beginning of that video. I promise I'll keep it quick, but I feel like you need to know it going into this video. Basically, biggest goal, non-cruelty-free products. I haven't bought or brought in non-cruelty-free products in two years, something like that. Um, I tried to use them up, but I have finally given up anything remaining I am decluttering, including NARS products, which went non-cruelty-free in the middle of the year. Honestly, like, I can't use them in videos. They piss me off. I'm sick of looking at them. I'm going to let someone else use them. Second biggest thing is that I do not have a big makeup collection, nor do I want one. I do this so I can continue to pare down. Um, so I can't get rid of hundreds of products because I don't even own 100 products. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to do blush bronzer and highlight and if we have time we'll move on to some other things too so you are looking at my entire blush collection right here cream and powder it is a total of eight products I know some people are super into blush I'm not I'm more so into like foundations concealers like base products so what I want to do with this one is pull out my favorites the things that I know I'm gonna keep that is a helpful way of going through just about anything even your closet so I know off the top of my head these three right here are my favorites <laughs> and you'll be able to see why they look very similar so this is the Urban Decay Afterglow Blush in Fetish. It is just a beautiful neutral pink color. I adore this one. Just great everyday blush. And I really like this formula. I think Urban Decay did a good thing when they released this formula. So that is a swatch of it right there. I'm going to build it up just for demonstration purposes so you can see it better in the video. But just beautiful neutral rosy color. It is an absolute keep. It's essentially what I was wearing every day. Now this is the deluxe sample size of the Tarte Blush and Party that we pretty much all got as our birthday gift from Sephora this year. And it is very similar and I love it as you can see. Um, my goal is to finish it up. I'm getting really close to it. I'm going to repress it here soon that way I can dip in with my brush easier and once you repress something it goes really quickly. It's a little bit peachier, a little bit warmer. This one has a little bit more pink in it but I'm absolutely going to keep it. I am going to finish it up. I've come this far. I still enjoy it. I'm going to use it up and then I'm going to go back to my Urban Decay one when it's gone. And finally this is my other favorite which is a Sigma Aura powder in the shade Cor de Rosa and as you can tell it's very much in the same vein. So I'm still really enjoying this. I'm still loving it and I'm still keeping it. Let's move on to this Antonym blush in rose. It is a baked blush and looking at it you would think it is right up my alley and that is exactly what I thought too. So as you can see it is a very pretty soft rose color but as you can also see it's very very soft and I don't have dark skin. I am a pretty fair light skin toned person and I have issues getting this to show up on my skin. But for that reason, I'm going to pull for those other three blushes that are of similar color and easier to work with. And so I'm going to declutter it. It bums me out. It's really pretty and it's not unworkable, but it's like, why should I keep it if I have other things that I really do like more? The last powder blush I have is another Urban Decay Afterglow blush in the shade Bittersweet. It is a beautiful bright purple color. And as you can see, when I said purple, I meant purple. It is very vibrant. Obviously, you can sheer it out on the cheeks. It's a great formula. I have no complaints about the blush in and of itself. The thing is, I just don't wear it. I think I have worn it once, maybe two times max this entire year of 2017. So I might as well give it to someone who may get some more use out of it. Let's move on to these last three cream products. I do have a deluxe size sample of the Bite Beauty Multi Stick in the shade Cashew. And there is a swatch of it there. Again, heavy swatch, so it'll show up on camera. It does actually sheer out quite nicely. I'm typically not going to reach for something if it's not like quick and easy and it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter this. It's a cream product. It's just going to spoil in my makeup collection. All right, and the last two products, I have two of the Glossier Cloud Paints, one in Puff and one in Dusk. I am definitely keeping both of them. Funny enough that these two mixed together are gorgeous. Love it. So there is Puff and Dusk, and it's a cream blush formula like I've never felt before. It's almost more gel-like. 
All right, so that is blushes done. I am keeping five and getting rid of three. However, in my defense, that tart blush is gonna be gone soon, okay? Then I'll just have two powder blushes and two cream blushes. All right, let's go ahead and move on to bronzer and contour. Technically, I only have one official contour product. That's the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder. So I just kind of threw it all together in one. Right off the bat, I only have one cream slash liquid product. It's the Pure Bronze Your Selfie. So Pure released this back this summer and it was sent to me PR and I don't really like it. It's not exactly what I expected it to be. I, I thought it was going to be a cream bronzer, but it's a gel formula. It's really sheer and really, really shimmery. It's more like something you put on your body. It it's not usable at all on your face. I don't know if you can see it there well. It's just kind of orangey and gold. I mean, it looks fine on your body. It looks fine, but it's just kind of like more effort than it's worth. And I'm definitely not going to use that on my face. So it's being decluttered. Next, we have the Bahama Mama Bronzer from The Balm, and a lot of people declutter this in declutter videos, I've noticed, um, but it's actually a fairly recent purchase for me. I've probably only had it like three months. I bought this because everything else was breaking me out, and the formula on this is very, very different than most bronzers, and so I thought it might work for me, and it has, and I love it, so it's a definite keep. Let's talk about the Butter Bronzer from Physicians Formula. I was a huge fan of it. I still am, I still like it. And I did finally see that they're coming out with some more shades, which is really nice, finally. My packaging is broke, which is frustrating, and a lot of people's, like it seems to break in the same place. Um, also, mine is repressed, so that's why it looks a little bit different. Maybe I'll try it again in the future, especially now that they have new colors coming out. But as of right now, you know, mine's just kind of shabby. I think I'm just going to pitch it. I don't need it. Um, I think it was breaking me out. I'd rather use my Bahama bronzer, so this one is going to be decluttered. I don't want to talk about that Ciate bronzer. That one hurts my heart. So instead, let's go ahead and mention the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow in the shade Light Medium. They also have a Medium Deep. So this has a bronze slash contour shade and then a highlighting shade, both of which I think are absolutely stunning and I will definitely be keeping it. The bronzer shade reminds me a heck of a lot of the butter bronzer. In my opinion, they are pretty damn close dupes. Let's go ahead and address the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder. I do have the shade Medium, which was the classic shade, but he has since expanded the range. There's now a lighter and a deeper shade. As you can see, I hit pan on it because when I first got this, I used the shit out of it and I thought it was so beautiful. I did give it a swatch right here so you can see how it's not necessarily cool toned in my opinion. It actually also has a very olive undertone to it, but it is much more cool toned than these bronzers. I did try to break it out recently. I've used it a few times and every time I use it, I feel like it looks muddy on me. Like it makes me look dirty and I just don't reach for it. I think I've just kind of run my course with this product and I'm going to give it away. Last bronzer. This one freaking pisses me off. This is the Ciate Bamboo Bronzer in the shade Palm Beach. Excuse me, South Beach. So I picked this up when I was trying to find a summer bronzer that would actually show up on me when I was tan. I know I don't look like it because I'm fair right now, but I actually get pretty tan in the summer. Here's a swatch of it right here. It looks really red, but that's actually really flattering on me because I'm so pink toned. Even when I'm tanned, I'm, I'm still red. And so I was so incredibly pissed to find that my new bronzer was breaking me out just like everything else. So I'm gonna give it away. I have the Bahama Mama now that works in the summer. I just need to move on with my life. Every time I see this, it pisses me off. So I need to move on. All right, and there we are. I am keeping two bronzing slash contouring products and I am getting rid of four. So let's move on to highlighters. This one should be fun. As you can see, I've re-included my Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow because it is half highlighter. So right off the bat, you can see one non-cruelty free product. This would have been my only non-cruelty free product left in my entire makeup collection had NARS gone not cruelty free. That's why it pisses me off. <laughs> So this highlighter is a couple years old at this point. It was their limited edition Glowing Gardens highlight in 001 Glowing Pink. You may remember when these were released. I do have it swatched. It's the very first swatch right here. I love baked gelée products too. It's absolutely beautiful, um, but it's, it's not cruelty free, so it needs to go. Someone else can get some use out of it. And 
it's one of those things, if you look at it, if you take the packaging away, you don't think about it being Dior and you don't think about the pretty pattern, etc., etc., you know, it's it's just a highlighter. It's nothing incredibly special. I have other pink highlighters. It's not that big of a deal. So I need to remind myself of that and let someone else use it. Next, we have the Essence Pure Nude Highlight, another pretty hyped up product here on YouTube. A lot of people really love this product. I do have it swatched right here. It's the second swatch, kind of has a peachy pink undertone to it, and it is very subtle. Unfortunately, I just feel like it emphasizes every single pore, every fine line on my face anywhere I put it. You wouldn't think it would, um, being as subtle as it is, you'd think a more bold highlight would do that, but I'm telling you, I just, I don't like it every time I use it. I'm really not crazy about it, and so I'm going to get rid of it. FYI, I do technically own the Kat Von D Alchemist palette, which you may consider a highlighting palette. I did depop mine and put it in my Z palette with my eyeshadow singles. Um, I feel like I use them more like that, so you're not going to see it here in this highlight declutter. Next, we have an Ofra highlighter in the shade Blissful. I know this one and a lot of their highlighters have gotten a lot of hype over the last couple of years. It is right here, and it is the most intense highlighter I own, the most intense highlighter I've ever seen. It's like a freaking eyeshadow. It is fairly new and I'm still enjoying playing around with it, so I am going to keep it. Then, of course, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow again, which I will be keeping. Uh, I did swatch the highlight right here. Some people say it's subtle. I mean, it is subtle compared to that Ofra one, but I, I think it's absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you I am keeping the last two. This one is technically an eyeshadow. It is the Kat Von D Metal Crush Eyeshadow in Thunderstruck. There is a swatch of it right there. I keep it with my highlighters because that's what I use it the most as. It's just a pearly white base that also has, I mean, it has a gold and a pink reflect to it. It is absolutely beautiful. And the last one is my beloved Laura Geller Baked Highlighter in Vanilla. I used to be a huge fan of her highlighters. I've panned complete ones before, um, but this is the last one I have left now. And as you can see, I've hit pan and it hit the baked tile underneath. So I'm absolutely keeping it. I am going to use up every last drop. I just, it's a perfect everyday highlight. I have it swatched here, the very last swatch. It looks like absolutely nothing, but on the skin, it is just so freaking gorgeous. So there we go, technically keeping four, getting rid of two. I believe I count this in my bronzer category, if I'm correct, so it would technically be down to three highlighters. So not too bad. Like I said, I don't have a massive makeup collection. I'm gonna keep what I love. I'm gonna get rid of everything that I can, but I just don't have the numbers to be getting rid of hundreds of products. All right, so here is my decline clutter bin starting to fill up a little bit more. We're probably a good third of the way filled. I definitely hope you're enjoying this process as much as I am. I love year in decluttering. It just makes me happy. And I hope you'll stick around and subscribe because I definitely have more coming up. I still need to do my closet, bathroom. I have a bunch more coming. So thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see y'all in a couple of days in my next video. Love y'all. Bye.